All right, friends. I'm so singing and excited about tonight. Um, Katie Bevington is going to come and share some amazing, amazing tips with you guys. So make sure that we are being very respectful over time. Turn your cameras on, get ready to go. Ignore the fact I'm out of breath. <laughs> and make sure that we are not just going to be listening, but we're actively listening. And when you're actively listening, that means you're taking engaged notes right? If we're just listening in on something, it's only going in your brain once. <laughs> we're writing it down. We're going to hear it. We're going to write it. We're going to see it. And that gives it more like ability to stick to your brain. And you guys want to be sticking everything she says in there. So Katie, if you want to unmute, you should be able to. And will you just share your story with us? Yes. Hey, you guys, my name is Katie Bevington. I'm an ambassador diamond. I've been here for almost nine years, which is really weird. Makes me feel super old to say that now, but um, I think it's really cool also that I've been doing something, the same thing for almost a decade. And um, I originally wanted, or I wasn't really looking for this, but I really needed extra money. I'm a teen mom. I had my first daughter when I was 18. I was, I actually, fun fact, I graduated high school early because I wanted to get a jump start on med school. My dream was to be a doctor. I wanted to save lives and do all the things. And so I graduated high school early, um, got in college, finishing up my first year, and I found out I was pregnant. And so me and my husband now, we've been together since I was 16, and we totally weren't expecting that. We didn't even really want kids. And so my life was totally thrown around, had no idea what I was going to do. And then I ended up having her and deciding I was going to go to school to be a nurse instead. And I was just going to, you know, have a little bit more flexible of a schedule. I wouldn't have to do crazy amounts of school because I just really didn't want to miss out on that time with her. And so I started nursing school. I was working full time as a CNA and nurse assistant, and I had no time with my daughter. I had not enough money to cover the bills every single month. And I was sick and tired of being broke. My husband was working full time. He was in construction and we just had no money at the end of the month. And that was like, we had $23 after we paid our bills. And so we were supposed to somehow use that for groceries for the month, gas for the month, anything extra diapers, wipes, anything my daughter needed that was supposed to all come out of that $23 and $23 only goes so far. And so we were using a credit card to pay for things. And so when I came across this is actually the first time I was at a gym. Some girl had like a table set up or whatever. And she, um, I tried like some greens or something and she never followed up with me. She messaged me once, asked me to host a party. And I was like, no, don't do that. And then, um, I saw it again on Facebook a few weeks later. And that is when I started getting serious because at this point, like me and my husband, we were just drowning in, um, really debt and credit card debt and student loan debt. And like, we had no idea how we we're going to survive. And so I was looking for a way to make extra money, but I didn't have extra time because I was already working full time and I had school full time. And I don't know if we have any nurses on here, but nursing school is basically a full time job. And then I also had a newborn. So my life was chaotic. I had no time for anything, but I needed extra income. And so this girl asked me, I said no. Um, she asked me again. I kept saying no. She asked me like every day for literally a month. And I was like, okay, fine. Like, I'll just do this. Like, maybe this is my sign because I was begging God to give me something. And I was like, maybe this is it. Even though I was terrified, my husband was not impressed. He was like, this is not going to work. People don't really make money with these things, blah, blah, blah. And so anyways, I jumped in and I was terrified. I took forever to actually start because I was so afraid of what people were going to say about me to me. Um, and really just kind of like how, what the reaction was going to be on my page. And then it got to my fourth week in my first month. So my fourth week in business. And I decided I was just going to go for it to get my bonus. And I don't know what kind of got into me at that moment, but I was like, let's just go for it. I'm going to get this. And so I ended up getting four customers. And that right there is what built my belief that I could do this because I got customers that weren't my family. And I found people that wanted this product. And I'm like, okay, if I can, if I got serious about my business for one week and I worked really, really hard for like one week, if I could do that, imagine what my life would look like in 30 more days if I did that every single day. And then I kept doing it. I went Ruby. And then shortly after that, I went Emerald my, and my leader quit. And I think this is a really important portion because I'm like, okay, what do you do when you're new and your leader just leaves you? And you're like, okay, well, there's nobody else to really take me anywhere. I had to figure it out. And so what I had to do then was I went on YouTube and I started seeking answers and I went crazy, started enrolling a lot. And then next thing you know, I went diamond and I went double diamond because I went to conference. So I went emeralds, then there was Christmas. And then I went to conference in January, left there. I went uh, diamond. And then the next month after that, I went double diamond. And so at this point, you guys, I was 19 years old and I was making over $6,000 a month by myself without my husband's income. And that was crazy. Cause that's the most amount of money we've ever made in a month. And 
more than it's probably double what we were making together. And I was making it in one paycheck from this. And so at that point I was like, you know what? I'm no longer going to school to be a nurse. I'm going to be a stay at home mom. Like I can do that now because we have the income year two. I went triple diamond and I was making five figures monthly. And I was like, this is the craziest thing I've ever done. Never knew that I could make money like that. Kept going, went presidential, kept going, went ambassador. And my husband, uh, we retired him from construction when I was triple diamond. And there's been a lot of things in between that we've done. Like we've done a lot of cool things, but one of the best things that I can tell you out of all the money that I've made, out of all the things, the fancy titles and things, that none of that is the best thing. The best thing is that I have freedom of time. I'm a stay at home mom. I've never went to work since my, my oldest daughter was um, just under a year old. I have never missed a moment of my kids' lives. I've never missed time at sports. I've never missed a competition. I've never missed a practice. I never have to miss anything. I get to homeschool. Um, I get to live the life that I want to live. And I get to take my kids all on these crazy, cool vacations and trips. So they get to learn and see things hands-on. And my, that's my, the one thing that I think is so priceless is that I just have the freedom. No one tells me no. No one tells me when I can pee, when I can attend my kids' stuff, when I can do things. They don't tell us how much family time we get. We literally get to live life every single day together, making memories, because this is simply time you can't get back. And so I'm so forever grateful for that. Um, and then also, of course, having my bill set on auto pay and being able to walk into the grocery store, put the stuff in the cart and not have to freak out and wonder like, is my car going to process or is it going to decline and embarrass me at the register? So that's my story. I love it. Yeah. My business, I feel like entirely shifted when I had my daughter, it changes everything. Cause like Obviously the money is nice and the friends are nice and all of these things are so cool. But then when you have kids or being a mom starting this, it's just that time that you be able to like afford it, just nothing compares to it, to being able to raise your own kids, to be able to set their schedule and just create that different life. Like it definitely has been a huge game changer. And I like how you ended with that. Cause that's going to segue right into my next question. Um, so I was doing a call with some of my leaders, um, a couple weeks ago and they were like, I just, they wanted to hear from someone who homeschooled. I've got like several homeschool moms on here and that's a whole different breed. You guys, one day that's my plan. My daughter is less is under two. So we're not there yet, but so they want to know, cause homeschooling is a whole different job then taking your kids to school, then working for full time. It's just a whole different balance. So in this, like with this season of life, cause you've gone through so many seasons in your business, how are you managing both like work life balance, but adding homeschooling into that too? Okay. So I think this is such a, a good question. And I think honestly, like when you are homeschooling, it really depends on how you're homeschooling. Okay. I am a chill, cool homeschooling mom. So one thing that we are going to do is we are not going to have pressure in my house to complete hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of schoolwork. And I feel like most homeschool moms agree with that. We follow curriculum, but um, we also do a lot of other like hands-on stuff. So I'm a mix between like curriculum and like unschooling a little bit. So basically every single day, my schedule is we have, we run on a schedule and we will never not run on a schedule. So even though I'm cool and flexible, we do not run off schedules. We have schedules. So when we wake up in the morning, um, we make, I'm always up before my kids and my kids wake up like late. Okay. My kids are like 9am, 10am sleepers. And then anyway, so I wake up before them. I make sure that I get my self-development time, my quiet time. And I get my first shift of the day before they get up. So my reels are posted. My posts are, my first post is going up. My stories are up. I have uh, my messages sent out. Like all of that stuff is done before they even wake up. Okay. The once they wake up, then we start the day. Then I'm doing breakfast and then we go right into school and we start like doing their school stuff. And usually my youngest daughter's in kindergarten. So we're done actual book work in 30 minutes. My oldest is in fourth grade. And so she takes a little bit longer depending on her own little schedule thing. But usually it is kind of, again, this is also like depend on how old your kids, because my kid, my oldest can read, so she can pretty much do a lot of the schoolwork on her own. But my youngest obviously is um, five. And so we're work, she does hers in 30 minutes. So it's focus time for me for 30 minutes. And then my oldest sits in the room um, or in my kitchen or whatever. And as she does her work, I get other things done. So this is my time to like kind of work on house chores. So I like to get like my laundry done or my dishes done or whatever needs to happen in that time zone, just so I have all that done. So when she's done school, her and my youngest go play. And like I said, depending on her and like the time and things, it might take an hour, it might take an hour and a half. But after that, we're done. And my phone's really, honestly, I answer it if I have messages, but I'm not like on it scrolling or anything like that during this time. Like this is just like school time and catch up time. 
from the morning, any dishes and just crazy chaos that happened in the morning gets cleaned up. When they're done, they go play. And so they're doing independent play, doing whatever they want to do. And then after that, we dive right into um, our lunchtime. We have lunch and then I get another shift done there. So you'll see another post going up around lunchtime. You'll see another, um, you know, maybe some more stories going up, things like that in the middle of the day, usually like 1231 o'clock is when we have lunch. And so all that gets done. And then phone goes back down. I work out. I get things done around the house again, catching up, letting dogs out, all that kind of good stuff. And then we do um, sports and dinner is usually how it goes. And then at nighttime when my kids are in bed, then I have another quick, I don't do a lot of work in the evening time because I like to relax. Um, but I get to do that now because this is my full-time thing. So a lot of my work is done earlier in the day. If I still work, it would be done at the end of the day. Um, but I do a little bit of work wrapping things up, answering my DMs, answering all my messages and making sure I get another post up on Facebook. If I have not already, I post three times a day on Facebook, sometimes four. And I always post one reel a day on Facebook and Instagram. So those are like my priorities and all those are done. And they are always scheduled before I get to the day. So before I go to bed tonight, everything is done for tomorrow. So I don't have to think about it and then chaos of homeschooling and things. Cause sometimes things are a little bit different. And you know, if you're a homeschool mom, like not every day is the same, but for like in a nutshell, that's pretty much how it goes. When days that we have co-op, I make sure that I am not on my phone the whole entire time we're at co-op. I'm with my kids, I'm present, I'm teaching, I'm doing the things. And then of course, if we have field trips and things like that, I only record content here and there while I'm there. And then that usually gets posted when we're no longer at the field trip. I love that. I like that, how it's like sectioned off and that you clarified that you are keeping them separate. Because I feel like a lot of times when we're overwhelmed with our business, it's because we are not separating business and life. Like we are still scrolling while doing life or we're trying to mesh the two. But when we can make that fine line, I feel like it allows us to be so much more present in both. And when you're more present on either with your family or business, like you're going to see better growth there with that intentionality. And I like how you made sure to clarify that. So I want to piggyback one more question from there. So you're doing most of your work earlier in the day. Like you said, you're not working in the evening. So what do those, those two like set shifts for you? What does that kind of look like? What are you getting done? Okay. So it really depends on like a few different, like I have one day a week that I do content. Okay. So one day a week, and this is, I think sometimes we forget like content is actually work. And so we forget that that takes time. And then we're like, Oh my gosh, I didn't send as many messages that that's okay because you're doing your content and you should, that's a part of your job. Like that needs to be done. So one day a week, that'll be straight content. Um, otherwise the other days of the week that I make sure that I get my posts up, there should always be a post in, I have a general rule of thumb that I have morning, afternoon, night, for posts. And so, and then I'll like throw a reel in there somewhere um, on Facebook. And then on Instagram, it's just one reel a day. So those really go into like my kind of like my shift. So morning, when I first kind of get up, I already know what I'm going to post. So that gets posted. Then the afternoon, I already know what I'm going to post. So that just gets thrown up. So they're all pre-done, but they just get posted at those times. So I make sure that's on my task list. Um, my self-development is in the morning first, always do not miss that ever. And then I make sure that I send out host post messages in the morning as well. I usually try to get out about 25 and I split that into two. So like it starts at the beginning, before I even just start my self-development, I send out like 15. Um, and then when I'm done, it takes about 30, 45 minutes. I'll send out 10 more just so I don't get blocked. I do adjust the words and things like that, but I send them in two different like blocks. I do not answer any DMs though until I am done doing my self-development and I'm like ready to answer messages. I have my phone on do not disturb while I send them. So I don't even know who's answering me in the midst of me sending them. So I send them out. And then after that, I make sure that I get up my stories and then, um, the rest of the shift I engage, I, add, I add people on Facebook and I make sure that I also message off of stories. So I will go through the stories and I will start conversations with people. I scroll all the way to the back. So like on Instagram, there's bubbles, right? And then at the top, the people you watch the most are on the left. So you want to go all the way to the right and message those people and build conversation. I just talk to them about whatever they posted on their stories. Sometimes they just post a selfie. I'll talk to them and be like, oh my gosh, you look amazing. You know, they're talking about their kids, whatever. I build conversation and talk through stories more than I talk through anything else. It gives me the easiest way to build relationships. So I will go through and spend time doing that. And I comment on five things on Instagram, five things on Facebook every single morning, first thing. And then basically the second shift, I'm pretty much repeating everything I just said. Um, with the exception of host post messages, it really depends on the day and how many I got out and how many said yes, because I try to aim for anywhere between five to 10 hosts to post, depending on how many comments they get um, on like Facebook and Instagram. It's kind of same thing. Like I do host posts on Instagram too. If I don't get a lot of hits 
and my inbox is kind of dry, I'll do it more. Um, but then I also respond to my messages for my reels. I get quite a lot of people for my reels. So it takes me some time to go through that and make sure I'm actually messaging everybody back because the comment section gets kind of wild on my Instagram. I love it. So simple. Um, so to go back to dealing with your kids throughout the day, how do you co combat mom guilt as you are like being a stay at home mom with your kids there full time? I feel like that's more present having that mom guilt. You're not having this separated time where you can just kind of, you know, put your head down and work. So how are you dealing with the mom guilt? And then also, how are you helping your kids understand that like mommy's got to work for a minute? So like, give me a sec. <laughs> Yeah. So my kids, so Cammy, my oldest is nine and she's grown up like knowing that this is like what it is. So, um, in the beginning, basically like when she was like a toddler and stuff, I just had import like sectioned off time. So like, you know, she had naps and things back then. Like we don't do obviously no more naps now, but back then when they had naps, I made sure that when they were napping and stuff, I would get it done as much as I could. And then I would like also have independent time. Like I'm a huge believer in independent time where they can independently entertain themselves. I think like a lot of times mom guilt stems from us feeling like we have to entertain our kids for 24 seven. Like we think that if we're not giving them something to do, they're not going to be able to figure that out. And so I think back to when I was a child, like my mom was not giving me games every single hour of the day. My mom wasn't coming up with these Pinterest crafts and saying, oh my gosh, I've got like a million supplies for you to make this thing. None of that. And however, my mom was not a bad mom. And so when I am parenting my kids and going throughout the day, like there's days where we spend a lot of time together because we're doing like as a, like in our house, we do a lot of field trips, like at least once a week. So we're like, when I call it a field trip, like we, we go do something that's pretty crazy. So what that's an extra amount of time co-op is a whole day with me and like their friends. And then in during regular days, like we have time together, but when they're at this age now, it's just simply saying like, Hey, I have to get this done. I need you to go do something until I'm done. So like this morning I was doing content. My daughter was like, Hey, are you about to do content? Yes. She's like, okay, great. And I was like, I need an hour. And so they go entertain themselves for one hour up in their playroom. And then of course, when they're done, I'm, I let them know after this hour, we can get together and do something fun. And so then we'll go outside, we'll play chalk, we'll ride bikes, we'll do skates, whatever. But they know that for that hour, I'm busy. And so when you, I think kids are a lot more receptive to things if you just actually explain what you're doing and stick to what you said you were going to do. Because if you said, I'll be done in one hour or I'll be done in 30 minutes and you got caught scrolling, your timer is done in 30 minutes. Your kids are expecting you in 30 minutes and you should honor that and make sure that you are actually doing what you said you were going to do. Same thing for your husbands. If you do not communicate what you need from your husband, because sometimes like in business, especially like in the more so in the beginning, but like now Zach's so used to it. But in the beginning, I had to tell Zach, I need you to take the kids for me for a little bit so I can do this. If it was when I had babies, like you can't just tell a baby like, hey, yo, I need you to go away. So like I was like, hey, I need you to take care of the kids for 30 minutes or for an hour or for two hours or whatever I needed in the moment. That way he knew like I need you to do this so I can achieve this. And it makes it really fun because not only do my like do my uh, kids see that I'm going after and chasing goals and they get to see their mom go after goals and achieve goals and like be able to do things for our family that otherwise we wouldn't have but also show like my husband like in the beginning he needed to see that success and so me sticking to what I said I was gonna do showed him that hey if you watch the kids for this amount of time even though I know you're exhausted from working all day I am too but I'm about to hustle this out and bust this out I'm gonna be able to get us out of this situation and so explaining the explicit things and giving my kids things too because there's times where my kids are just extra needy. I put on a movie, we sit down next to each other and I get out work. It's not always perfect. They don't always, you know, just go play and like are argument free for an hour. Like my life is not perfect like that at all. Even though I wish it was, it doesn't happen like that. Sometimes we're watching movies while I get some stuff done. Sometimes we're, you know, I might give them like a painting thing, but I always have like a little craft box. If you, you know, if you don't already have something that's kind of like a new box for things that are brand new that you, you might, might need to pull out in an emergent situation. We have a box to get a bunch of stuff from uh, five below and then you just throw it in a box. And so when you need something like, oh my gosh, I got you guys the coolest little canvases. They're like three bucks. Give them to my kids. They're good for two hours because now they're painting a canvas. So just little things like that throughout the house. But I am very open about like, hey, I have a Zoom tonight at 8.30. Don't come in my office from 8.30 to 9.30. And they're just like, okay, great, cool, got it. And they just go do their own thing at this point. But my kids are also nine and five. I love that setting that expectation and sticking to your word. I feel like that is the biggest part of it. And then doing it consistently. 
like you said, your kids have grown up through this, but if you were wishy-washy the whole time, you wouldn't have them like understanding the way they do now. And so it's just sticking to what you say you're going to do and holding yourself accountable, set your timer for 30 minutes. And then what you do with that 30 minutes, that's your responsibility. If you misuse your time, that doesn't change anything. You still owe to your family to be present when you're done with your work. And so that's also gonna help train you to be more responsible with your time. And I love that. So let's talk a little bit about bringing some newbies in. I wanna know what you're doing to help duplicate some of this success that you're having in your business with new people and helping them get those wins quickly. Okay, this is amazing, you guys. I have, I just got to tell you guys the craziest thing. So my newbies over the last 60 days, I have one girl who has, I checked this morning, she has 16 PMs and 1800 volumes. I have another girl coming in. Uh, she's going to executive. She started six days ago. She's 200 from executive. And those two newbies under her are the ones who got the volume. She's not placed, It's which is amazing. We've got newbies winning left and right. And so here's the thing that I think matters the most, okay? So first, when they come in, I make sure that they understand everything is very simple, okay? You have to make it simple in the beginning because drop a one in the chat if you are scared when you got started, okay? I need y'all to, to just realize how afraid people are when they start. They are terrified and so also overwhelmed because not only are they like scared, but now they're having to pose and put themselves out there in front of so many people when they are already like so nervous. So when they come in, we get them started by getting just a little post up saying, hey, you guys, I'm so excited. I'm starting something new. Just sharing basically like they're just going to be posting more and like kind of giving people a background before they post their first post. So that kind of eliminates the whole like, what is this you or is this a scam or whatever? We get rid of that by just saying, hey, I'm going to be doing something new. You're going to see a lot of me soon. I'm so excited to share. Then it kind of creates curiosity while we do backend stuff. So backend stuff. So they post their posts. Now we're going to get them into our team chats. I'm going to be getting them into like boards and things like that. Just be the basic stuff. So that way they're going to be into all the behind the scenes. And then once that's done, then we're going to get them into our training. And our training starts by just explaining like um, a little bit more about our team, our culture, and then they get into their why how to find your why, writing that down and understanding like, you you know, there's going to be times where people say no, there's going to be times where you feel like, you know, it's hard where people are going to say nasty things to you and that's normal. And then we dive into um, how to get customers. So this is like our part one, you need to go get your four customers and how they get their four customers. You post, you create videos and you do host a post. There's three different things. And so you need to do that every single day. That is their goal. And I try to get them out of their comfort zone kind of as much as possible in those first few weeks, just so that they have the most amount of wins at the CEO summit. We had like a lady come in and talk about um, just a huge study that was done in network marketing all around. And so the craziest thing to me, this is like what, well, it just stuck to me is that when people come in, they need to win within two weeks. So you have 14 days to keep their attention. You've got 14 days to get them a bonus, 14 days to give them a win. And so, and that's for like the younger generation, the older generation, which I believe is like, uh, uh, I want to say Gen X, which is like 50s or something. You you have like four weeks for them, but anybody that's like below that, you have 14 days. So we have got to get to work quickly. So I know that it's important to get them their customers. And so sometimes like people come in, they had a great market. Their first like or their first real post about the products. We do a host to post on their wall for their first post is great. Like sometimes people pop off. They've got like five or ten comments, and that's amazing, right? But then there are people come in and get no engagement on that post at all. And we've got to really beef that up through host to post and getting them posting more and getting them, you know, creating a couple videos and things like that. So we do that. And then um, once they get their four customers, then we train them on how to get a distributor. And that training will just basically show them like how to start posting their story. How do you even know what your story is? All that kind of stuff. What to post business wise. Um, and then the next thing is how to go Ruby. So it's in three different sections, starting one customer, start two is the uh, distributors and we get them to go Ruby and we do not waste any time. And we are talking to them every single day. So how do we actually get them engaged and to actually move forward is we stay on them and we encourage them. How are you doing today? I'm so excited for you. Are you understanding everything? Are you feeling more comfortable with it? Um, hey, did you get post two up? I'm so excited for you. You're doing great so far. Um, do you have any, you know, what are you most excited about? Just asking questions and getting to know them, 
talking to them like they're a real human being because they are. And so the more you can conversate, the more you can talk to them, the more that you can cheer them on and make that, like, let them know, Hey, I'm in your circle and I'm here. I'm cheering you on. I'm here to help you every step of the way, the more comfortable they are with you, the more comfortable they are to tell you that they're nervous or that somebody said something mean to them or that they're just like unsure or whatever. So that way you can kind of keep them going and keep them motivated. Also making sure that right away they're putting your zoom times in their phone. That's really, really important. Like we don't play around when it comes to Zoom. Like if you want to be trained, like you need to get on Zoom every single week. Do not skip Zooms because if you stay far away from the fire, you are going to fall off immediately because you feel lonely. So we make sure that those are logged in their reminders right away as well. And we make sure that we are just like heavily loving on them. Um, yes, we do provide posts for them every single day for their first. So they have posts for the first 10 days. And then once they get their kit, they immediately begin like video content, just like they would if they were a super seasoned distributor, we've got a content training for that. So that way they're learning like, okay, this is the video. And we just have videos saved for them to recreate. So it's not like copy pasted videos where like they just take the same video and everybody posts it. They actually create their own, but we just have them um, like examples to show them. And then of course, like we guide them in that way, like, Hey, you know, adjust this here and there, or Hey, you know, I would just add this next time or whatever. That way they kind of just get more familiar with it and are more willing to like put themselves out there because it's scary. But in the same token, like when my team is trying to get distributors, we are really heavy on content. And so we don't like hesitate to say like, you're going to be creating content. That's a part of it. And so they kind of come into it knowing like, this is what we're going to be doing. And yes, Teresa, I do have a newbie board. I love that. And setting the standard in advance, both with like what your culture is, the fact that you're going to be on training. If you want to be trained, you got to be on training. And then also like, you're going to have to make content. And I like that you're setting that standard with them from the get-go. Cause I feel like sometimes we sugarcoat things thinking we're making it like easier for them to take in. But anytime we're sh sugarcoating anything, guys, it's just like diluting their success. It's making it so much harder on it. Cause the reality is this is very simple, but it takes effort work and being uncomfortable. And we have to let people know as they're coming in that that's what's expected of them. Otherwise, when they get there, they're going to be like, hold on, pump, pump the brakes. <laughs> this is not what I was expecting. And when you remove that, they know what they're coming in. They know what they're expecting. They're going to automatically start getting traction quicker because they're the right people. Um, okay. So tell me about a time in your business. Cause you've been here for a couple of years. You've been here for multiple seasons from working, babies, older kids, like all of the things. T tell me about a time in your business that stands out like the first one that comes to your mind where you were like, this is not working. I have to pivot. Something has to change. And you found a good pivot in your business that kind of revamped it and helped push you to whatever that goal was. Uh, so the, actually it's funny because the hardest part of my business, hardest season ever was when I was triple diamond and I did not, like, I couldn't go presidential. I was stuck for so freaking long. And I had never not promoted for that long before the year and a half I was sitting at triple diamond and I was like, okay, like, why is this not going? I'm working. I was about to have my second baby. And I'm just sitting there. Like, I have no idea if I'm even meant to be here anymore. I don't know if God will ever intend for me to go further than this. You know, I've made the most amount of money I've ever made in a month. Like, this is a lot of money. This is great money. I'm grateful, but like, I don't know. Like, I just felt like I couldn't get past that. I was sitting around like 50, 55,000 GV, like right at the cusp of triple. And I was trying to go presidential and I kept pushing and like, it was not going. And so I had to kind of take a step back and I, I was due with my second baby in June, the end of June. And I was like, I'm going to go prez before June. It did not happen. And that was the first real time that I was like really far away from a goal. I didn't just miss it by like a hair. I missed it by a lot. And so I was getting angry and I was like, you know, I told my husband, I was like, I don't know if I'm even meant to do this. Like this might not be for me. And I don't think I'm going to go any farther than this. And then I had a really hard time. So I gave birth to my daughter and I went through postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, really bad. Never even knew what that stuff was like never experienced anxiety or depression before I had my second daughter. And it brought me to my knees. I was desperate. And I was like, I went to God and I was like, listen, like, what do you, what do I need to do? Like, what's wrong with me? Like, what's, why are you doing this to me? What's happening? And, um, what happened was God had to break me down before he could build me back up. And I was not listening for a very long time. I was just kind of doing my thing. Like, yeah, God is good, whatever. And going about my life and not seeking his counsel, not seeking him. And really just kind of doing what I, I kind of wanted 
And so he had to get me to a point where I was open to listening, where I was open to his guidance and his, his ways. And so I had to like get all the way broken down. And I mean, to the very bottom. And I remember like, I was like, okay, I'm just going to start writing out things. I'm going to start journaling again. I'm going to start praying every day. I'm going to start reading my Bible, doing all the things. And when I started doing that, I realized the reason my team wasn't moving is because one, I was not leading the pack at the pace that it needed to be led. And that was a big aha moment for me because it was a lot of like, well, my leader's not doing this and they're not doing this and they need to be doing this. But there was me, I was enrolling, but I wasn't setting the pace. So I needed to set the pace. The next thing that I learned was I needed to go out there and work like my life depended on it. And like, I was ready for that next rank. I was working, but I wasn't ready for that next rank yet. And I wasn't like leadership ready. I wasn't working ready. I just was not in the right headspace to go to that rank because I needed to learn some more lessons. And so I don't know if any of you guys are in a space where you're like, okay, well, why am I sitting at this point for so long? It's probably because you're being stubborn and not learning the lesson that needs to be learned. And so until you learn that lesson, you will not move forward. So find out what that lesson is. And you do that through prayer, relaxing, sitting still, and just listening and learning. Then the next thing that I learned was that I need to pray over my business. I hadn't done that in a long time. I need to start praying over my business. I need to start getting serious about it and letting God be in charge of the whole entire situation. And so I started doing those things. Things started to get like ease up very slowly. It was not overnight. It was, it was not very quickly at first, but it was me working. I started working again. I started working with attention, working with passion and working with vision and sharing that with my team, being more kind, loving on my team harder. I wasn't loving on them enough. I wasn't being intentional with my words. And people ask me, I've been on a lot of Zooms this month. And one of the things that somebody asked me was, what is the one thing that you really wish that like you would have done differently in the beginning? And it was speaking my love for others out loud loud because I, I feel like people always know that I love them, right? Like I'm like, yeah, duh. I love you. You're my friend. I talk to you every day, but the more you say that to your team, the more empowered and the more needed they feel. And it's so essential. So saying things to your team, complimenting people, telling your leaders. So I started doing more of those things at that point. And then next thing, you know, people started coming in like crazy. Like our enrollments were shooting up. New leaders were rising. My, like my existing leaders started just going crazy. They started going enrolling so much and everything started coming in I needed a new diamond to go presidential at this point so it was July when I had my daughter and then in August we went presidential diamond um and we went up over a hundred thousand volume in that time period so about 60 days and it was the craziest jump we've ever had and it had the most momentum and the most promotions and the most excitement um but it really took me I had to take a step back and look from the outside looking in what was it missing and truly it was like me being annoying and being bossy and not doing what I should have been doing as a leader. And I also had to bring God into it and let him reform me, reshape me and coach me to get me to where I needed to be. Because ultimately there's always highs and lows in business. But like, if you steer too far off, then you need to be realigned and you've got to re like kind of align, understand what derailed you from where you were, what needs to change for your business to change. And a lot of times the answer is just you. I love that. You kind of answered my last question as well, but I'm going to bring it back and let you elaborate a little bit. Um, but it was going to be, if you could go back in time and give advice to your new distributor self, what would it be? So that would be to express your love for your team, be more intentional with your words with them. So if you were to on two folds of this, if there's new people on there, cause I know I've got a lot of new team, they get to do this for the first time. And so how would you tell them like, what that actually looks like. Cause like coming from a red personality, this has been one of the hardest things in my business of learning what it meant to actually love and express that for my team. Because my first instinct has never been like, good job. Like I'm, you're amazing. Like you look good today. Like just creating that compliment side and all of that. So that's been something I've had to really grow in. So if you're starting out, like how do you start with that and start nurturing that from the beginning? And for those people that have been around the block, been here for a minute, how do you like reconnect and make that shift? Yes. So when you guys, if you're new, one thing that you should know is the red personality is me. It means you're really hardcore. Okay. Like you are good. You're strong, like confident, good on your own. And you don't need somebody that's like, great job, sweetie. You're doing amazing. But then the yellow personalities, those are the 
kind people who love everyone and they love compliments and they want to make everyone feel good. And then we have greens that are super analytical. They have way a lot of questions and they're the people who read the distributor agreement before they start. And then the blues, those are the people who just want to have fun. Okay. They're here for like the trips. They're here for the retreats. They're here for the conference. Like they want to have fun. They don't care about anything else. So when you determining what kind of person you are, um, that helps you understand yourself, but really understanding your team and what they like is kind of really important because as a red, like Mariah said, like I, like, we don't need affection like that. And I'm good at cheering my own self on. And I don't care if anybody else cheers me on. I'm gonna, I'm just going to do what I'm going to do, but no one else almost like us reds are like this much. So if you're like me, then there's this much of us. And then like a lot of the world is yellow. Then we have like this much greens and then like this much blue. So you're most likely a yellow or a green or maybe a blue, but you're probably not a red. So listen, when you are new, one of the best things that you could do for your team is to start encouraging them immediately. So like, remember in the beginning when I said with newbies, like one of the things that we do with our newbies, I comment on their posts. I text them every single day and I don't care. Like if they don't text me back, I will still text them again. I have a method for that, but I basically can, I message them a few times because I'm like, Hey, I know you're probably nervous, but like, let's get this going. Um, and then I will also make sure that I send them gifts. So if you get a four in one, I will send you a small gift. If you go Ruby, you get a gift. If you go Emerald, you're getting a gift. Like, and I write a handwritten card out with the gift. And I have, like, I make sure that every single thing is very intentional because while not every single person is a, like a gift, like their love language is in gifts, every single person loves a gift. And no matter how big or small the gift is, it always makes me feel really special when I get a gift from anyone. Like it could literally be like corporate send me a gift, uh, like a picture of me on stage with a handwritten card. That means a lot to me because I know somebody took the time to write that out for me. And it's just a little picture frame. It's nothing crazy, but, and I don't have a leader, so I don't get gifts like that or anything like that, which is probably also the reason that I wasn't, you know, normalized to like things like this, but um, I also would just make sure that I am talking to them as a person, like ask them their questions. How many kids do you have? Are you married? You know, how long have you and your husband been together? How'd y'all meet? Like it just, people love to talk about themselves. And the funniest thing is, is when you just let them talk to you, they love you so much more just because you allow them to talk. How many of you guys are stay at home moms? And, um, you're like, I wish that like I had more interaction outside of my home. Okay. And like when somebody allows you to have a, a conversation, you're like, I think I just word vomited a little bit. And I told them my whole entire life, all the trauma, I trauma dumps. Like we just went to the whole, we went to the whole nine because I finally talked to another adult. So think about it like that. When you have a new distributor start, let them talk to you. Just keep asking questions. They are not going to be like, this girl's weird. They're going to be like, yeah, yeah. I want to tell you everything. I've got five kids. I homeschool, I'm making bread, I started sourdough, like just let them go, let them talk and then just respond and build that relationship. And don't be afraid to get out there and be like, hey, if your distributor is doing something good, write them a card with your hand, not typed, like with your hand, send it to them in the mail. And then you know what, if they get a four in one and you're getting $150 match it, you can go on Amazon and you can give them a $10 cute coffee cup. Okay. If they go Ruby, then I want you to go ahead and acknowledge that, get them a little gift, send them a handwritten card and blow it up on social media. If your newbie got two customers, you should be putting that in your story. If your newbie got four customers, put it in your story. Like you need to be shouting them out, making them feel so welcome and so loved, shouting them out in your chats. There is no such thing as too much recognition. So if you, the more you can do in the beginning, that's great. Now leaders, if you already are, you already have a team, you're like, I don't know really what to do and how to really implement this. The best way to implement this, because if your team's going to be like, well, this girl is being super lovey now, okay, just start comments on their photos. Text your leader once a week. Just check in on them. Hey, you know what also really helps to make my people feel like loved? There's two big things. One is if somebody in your team tells you that they have something coming up, write it down. I know you're going to be like, I'll remember that she's having surgery next Thursday. You won't. You won't write it down in your calendar to remind you that you need to message so-and-so because they're having surgery or their kids having surgery or their husband or their mom or their dad or whatever. If they said it to you, it's because in some way in their world, this is a big deal. They're nervous about it. They're anxious about it. They, they need a little bit more reassurance. So you should be reassuring them in some way and sending them a message saying, Hey, Cindy, I know you're having surgery today. I just want you to know I'm praying for you. I'm thinking about you today. Let me know if you need anything. Um, and you know, update me when you guys, when you come out and you're all good just so I know you're safe. Something like that. Simple, effective, and kind. When somebody is going, like they get sick, they have a flu or their kids are sick or, you know, whatever it may be, like go tell them, hey, you know, just set a reminder for two days. I know your daughter has been sick. How's she feeling? 
when you say things like that, it makes people know that you care about them. And if you feel like, cause I have somebody say like, well, is it not sincere if I, I set an alarm? No, it's not, it's not any less sincere because you set an alarm. If you're a mom or a dad or whatever, you've got kids, you got jobs, like life is busy. Like, I don't care. It's not any less sincere to me. If you told me that you set an alarm to ask me if I was okay when I had the flu, I don't care. As long as you said you checked in on me, I feel like you're a better person than everybody else. Cause you didn't check, like everybody else didn't check in, check in. Then the next thing that I would say is making sure that your team knows that they are needed. So I give people jobs. And so I give my leaders, everybody has a gift. And so in their gift, they have a job. So I will tell one of my leaders, you know, sometimes uh, I, have, I have a girl that's really good at like just loving on people. She's in charge of the newbie chat because she'll go in there and she just has such a gift with new people. She's so kind, uplifting every time somebody joins our newbie chat. She's like, welcome, Sarah. So happy to have you. And then she's like, where are you from? Starts a conversation. That's her job. That's her gift. That's not my gift. That's her gift. So she's in charge of that. It makes her feel like she needs, uh, she's needed on our organization because she is. And every gift is important. We've got people in charge of making graphics, like the little cute little Canva things that you see for Zooms. Somebody makes those. Then we have somebody in charge of sending motivational stuff in our team chats, just like videos, podcasts, whatever. She sends those. She's really great at that. And so we just have jobs. And one of like the reason I found this is because on one Zoom, I had some a guest and she was like, um, how many of you guys want to feel needed? You guys, every, almost every single one of my leaders was like, I would love to know that I am needed in this team. And so even things is like, if you think something's too small, it's not like if you're a diamond right now or an emerald, like asking somebody to do something for you that makes them feel happy, they would love to do that because it makes them feel like they're a part of the team and they're not just like, Kind of like it's thinking of think of it more of like um I don't I don't want to say like a sports team, okay? Like soccer, you can't win without a good goalie. And you can't win without a good offensive line, right? So like you have to have every part of the team working. And if you do everything, it takes away the ability for others to use their gifts. So your team will lack spark because there's not enough to go. Like there's only one, one person can only let out so much energy, so much positivity and so much spark. So you need to allow people to work in their gifts. That was a lot. I know. Sorry. <laughs> that was Perfect. That was so good. I love it. Took so many notes, guys. Put it to in the chat if you took something away from this, if you took lots of notes, because I think this was just what everyone was looking for. So the, will you leave us with a tip, advice? I know we are like in boom season, momentum is building, bonuses on the table, conference is coming, like there's so much happening. Leave us with your best tip, motivation, piece of advice, anything like that. My best tip for you is to do what you said you were going to do. And that means that if you came into this month in February 1st and you're like, I'm going Ruby and you've decided that you're giving up on Ruby because you're not close enough this month, you need to do what you said you were going to do and you need to go Ruby. There is plenty of time for you to do that. And so when a lot of times like we get to, we allow one day of feeling discouraged to take over the rest of the month. And if you have a bad day or even a bad week out of an entire month, you've determined that you can no longer hit the goal because you've missed X amount of time. And we have to learn that there's always going to be days, even as an ambassador, top income earner, somebody who's been at the top for a very long time. I've been at the top now longer than I've been at the bottom. And I will tell you, there are still days that I have to actually physically make myself do the work because I don't feel like it. I don't feel encouraged. I don't feel inspired. And I have got to get my life together. I'm like, this is just a feeling. Do not let your business run on motivation because it's a feeling and that is fleeting. You are not always happy. You are not always sad. So you cannot rely on motivation as another way to get your butt going in business. Do, just do what you said you were going to do. If you need to go Ruby this month and you still need a distributor, you can sign one tomorrow. And you know what's crazy? You can sign a distributor tomorrow that will transform your entire business. If you decide to, you can sign more customers. You guys, when we had that 20% promotion, I signed over 15 customers in two days, in 48 hours. Just easy. Just one, two, like right after each other, on top of each other, because I decided I was going to sign a ton of customers to help my people lock in their promotions this month. So wherever you are in business, you literally can decide today that you're going to make something happen and it's going to happen by the end of the month if you make the conscious effort to do that. So if you're going Ruby or you're going Emerald or you're trying to go Diamond or wherever you're at and you need 2,000 volume or 3,000 volume or whatever it is, you need to look at it. You need to tell your team, the worker bees, let's say, hey, this is what we're doing this month. This is what we need. This is what I need from you. This is what you need to get to your place, whatever. 
then then you're going to go after it and get it. That means you do host a post until you get the sale. That means you make videos until you get the sale. That means you're posting until you get the sale. Like it doesn't stop just because somebody said no. It doesn't stop just because it was a hard day. It doesn't stop because you had 15 posts up, host posts up and nobody commented on it yet. It just keeps going. It's a part of business. I want you to think about your business as a business. Think about does Target stop emailing you because you didn't buy from them last week when they emailed you the past seven days? Target doesn't care. They don't close. They don't really care that you deleted. They don't care that you didn't even read it. They're just going to keep sending you emails. What about Walmart or Sheen or whatever? Like they just keep messaging you no matter how many times you don't order. And it's because they know eventually you will. And so when you are running your business and you tell your spouse and you tell your kids, we're going to mom's doing this or dad's doing this or whatever. And you repeatedly don't do it. It's because you're actively deciding not to. And I, I mean that from the bottom of my soul. You have to choose success or not. And a lot of times when people are failing and they're not hitting their rank, it's because they keep allowing themselves to reset the next day. I didn't do my host post today, but I'll do it tomorrow. Well, I got busy today, so I'll do it tomorrow. It was a hard day. I have kids. I'll do it tomorrow. And the reality of it is life is going to be the same every single day for the rest of your life until you decide that you're no longer going to be in that same position. Yes. So, so good. Thank you so much for this. So I typically pray us out, but before doing so, I wanted to see Katie, if you wanted to pray us out tonight, you can say no, but if you're up for it, I know everyone probably would love it. Sure. I definitely can. You All right, go for it. Yep. All right. God, we come to you today and we are just so grateful for this time together. We're so grateful for being able to learn together, being in community with a bunch of people together with one big goal to serve you and to be able to honor you, God. We are so thankful. God, I ask you tonight to just bless every single person on this Zoom to make them feel encouraged, make them feel like you are near to them and close to them and you're ready to listen to whatever their heart desires, whatever they need, because Father, we know that you are there to listen, to care, and you care about the things that we desire and you tell us through your word, that we may ask, pray for what we need. We believe that you will do it, that we will receive it. So tonight, Lord, thank you for this gathering. Thank you for this team. And I just ask for blessings to be poured out over them tonight and for everybody to leave here excited and inspired and on fire for their goal and that they will hit everything that they set out in their heart for this month. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you guys so much for being on tonight. You know the drill, same time, same ID next week, and I will do my best to get this recording up tonight. If not tonight, then definitely tomorrow. All right, bye friends.